But what people will do will take an idea like I'm responsible, you know, kind of one of those kind of ideas, and then, oh my gosh, I just went to my doctor today and he told me I've got cancer or I've got this or that or that, or even more like I've got a flu, you know, I should I should be able to do better than this, you know. What happens is there's still an identity confusion. In other words, the, the, to say I'm, I'm responsible and then to put that with, oh, look, I've got cancer, is to, to try to combine two different levels. Remember, we're responsible for, for the way we look at things. And then you, you bring it down to, and I have cancer, there's an I confusion there. If you get fancy with the course and you say, well, sickness is just a projection of guilt onto the body. You know, you can you learn it in here. You go to the lectures and everything. And you take something like that to, oh my gosh, what am I doing to myself? You see, there's a level confusion there. Is Christ projecting sickness on, on himself? But that my body is, there's a real strong identification of the mind with this is me. And that's the whole thing that the Course is gently trying to guide us to see that it's slowly guiding us away from this body identification. You know, to a point of the thing that we're mind. And we can really get clear on what the ego is and we can just pull our mind from it. In other words, take, take the juice away from it, take the power, then we're, we're, we will choose peace at that point. But as long as we think the ego offers us something, and we still buy into it, then it's like our minds are not willing to choose the peace. Or we want to make exceptions. We want to say there are order of difficulties and miracles. This one right, you know, this one right here is more difficult than than that one. And basically we just want to hold on to exceptions in our mind. What you're saying is what like, really, really leave them with the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it has to change on the outside. If, we're, if the cause is within, then it has to change out here if the cause changes. And if it's not changing out here, if it's not manifesting itself out here, then it hasn't changed in here. Yeah, a good one to look at would be like Lesson 23, though, where um, maybe we'll just go to that one, because Jesus has some real powerful lines about the, the world and not trying to change the world or fix the world. And basically, this really gets at what we're talking about. We were just talking about the idea that what we see within is what we see without. And if you uh, if you look at kind of the middle of the first paragraph, he says, "Every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. It is with your thoughts then that we must work if your perception of the world is to be changed." If the cause of the world that you see is attack thoughts, you must learn that it is these thoughts which you do not want. Okay? If these attack thoughts would be analogous to these backward thoughts that we're talking about, that the cause is outside of my mind, they're ego, ego-based thoughts. There is no point in lamenting the world. There is no point in trying to change the world. It is incapable of change because it is merely an effect. Now those are pretty big sentences. Uh, it's, a lot of times people will say, boy, those are pretty strong sentences. No point in lamenting the world, no point in trying to change the world. An effect is kind of like, if we go back to our analogy of, of the uh, movie screen, you know, that basically, I like that one because, in a sense, if you go to a movie and you've got this projector, okay, and you've got this film going through with dark images on it, and the light goes through the dark images and then comes out and you see all these shadows dancing on the screen. That basically Jesus is saying that um, whenever we try to change things in the world, or, or to look to the world for things to change, it's, it's like there being a problem. You ever go to one of those films where there's a glitch in the film? It would be like going to, to up to the front screen. Instead of going back to talk to the manager about the projection, it would be like going up to the screen and banging on the screen mm -hmm. and saying, come on, get this thing out of here. You know, We can start to see that that would be silly to, to do that. And, and literally, it's like it's that film that's going through the projector. Except when you change the film, it's not up there either. Yeah, and in, in the ultimate, yeah, in the ultimate sense, it's not here, then it has to be still in here. Yeah, in the ultimate sense, it, it would be like once you got rid of, or once you over, were able to overlook those dark thoughts, that the world would kind of light up, so to speak. And the course even talks about uh, light episodes. You have light episodes, and and it kind of gives some metaphors for that. That. Uh, Definitely, that's what will happen when we let go of these attack thoughts, that our, our perception will literally 
find out. Now that's not to say that what's going on out there. In other words, when Jesus accepted the atonement, you know, it's like it didn't seem like the world exactly changed a whole lot in the sense of there still were Jews fighting in the Roman Empire, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And you know, the world seems to still be um, you know, kind of a mess, but what Jesus is saying is that's just twisted perception. You know, when you see war and conflict and fighting, it's your own lens that you're looking through that's, that's twisted. It's not anything out there in and of itself. I think that the, uh, that the world, no matter what your perception is, is always going to be screwed up because it's like a VCR. If you don't like a certain scene, you can fast forward to it, but then after a while, another scene you don't like will come up again. And, and like we have this thing in this world, if it's not one thing, it's another. And it's going to be another uh, come up. Uh, you, could, you can take care of a problem and, and maybe not have that particular problem again, but then you'll have another problem come up again. But you can even make this world a pleasant place to live in uh, to a certain extent, but in the final analysis, you're going to have to look at all those problems and say, who cares? Because that's the way Jesus did it. Uh, he, he said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And uh, you've got to rise above it and, and not even see the problem as problems. It's sort of like, who cares? You know? Yeah, the real well, healing. Right. To, to be able to rise above them like that. Uh, that's what I meant, and mainly is that, that it's not so much to heal the world, it's to heal your yourself. And once you heal yourself, well, the world doesn't matter anymore. I mean, the problem in the world doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Because you won't even see them. That got me going initially. I, I talked earlier before we started about, you know, kind of not being able to reconcile what I was seeing with these eyes, you know, with God. I mean, I, I was hearing, and I had a feeling of God. I kept hearing God was all-knowing and all-loving and all-powerful, okay? And that all seemed pretty to resonate. Like, yeah, 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 that sounds right. That sounds true. And then, then I got these eyes and ears. <laughs> you know, it's like watching the nightly news or whatever. And that's what the great thing about the Course is, is like when you say don't care, it's like it's literally saying, that's the good news, that the world as you perceive it through the distorted lens is not reconcilable with God. Whew. I mean, trying to fit them together, you know, it was always like, i got to find a way to put these together. And philosophy has tried it, and science, and you know, all the different ways of trying to, to reconcile how this happened. And what the Course is saying is, Jesus is saying, God did not create sickness, God did not create war, God did not create these things, but when you're looking through a twisted lens, you see it outside you because your own perception is twisted. So you can see how this is really getting us to the healing because if I can see that the split is in my own mind, then I can I can see that the correction is in my mind because I can see where the split is. Male female issues. If we could come back here probably do a an all week seminar on male female issues because, you know, it's it's like there's such a all this stuff about equality and everything, but it's all being projected onto form things. You know, quotas and this and that, and I've seen shows on TV where they've had male bashing and then blaming it on the, the society, the paternal society, and, and on this. You see how it's still, in subtle ways, it's still like, uh-huh, it's the problem of inequality is, is in the world. It's not the split in my mind. The ego just pr projected out of body, and then it's, it's I use the analogy of like, you know, teachers, did you ever those teachers in high school that used overhead projectors? Does anybody remember those? Where they, they have an overhead projector and then they have these little overlays. It's kind of like there's this beautiful pure white light on the screen, you know, and then they bring the overlay and then we can imagine drawing a body on it. So there's an overlay with the body. So now we got the form. And then the ego says, well, let's overlay male or female. And let's, let's put some skin color in there, black or white, so there's something, another difference we can really, you know, make and take advantage of. And then we'll put age in there, ages. And if you look at all the problems of ageism, sexism, racism, it really seems like those are big problems 
in the world. You hear it on nightly news all the time about the ageism and sexism and racism. And here comes the chorus saying, ageism is in your mind. Sexism is in your mind. Racism is in your mind. The ego belief system is That's why they call it wisdom. Because a girlfriend of mine were on the, she lives in Montana now, we were talking about, okay, if we're an idea or a thought of God, if we're creating God's image and likeness, so therefore, if ideas truly do not leave their source, therefore, if God is, therefore we are. Then we say, God is good, we are good. But, to have good, then there must be bad. So therefore, God is, we is. So if I is, you is, they is, he is, she is, we is, so we're isn't. We talked about isn't, <laughs> yeah. we got into the isn't of it, yeah. and we simply is. I is, God is. God is, and it stops there. It's like, I am. I am not good, I am not a mother, I am not a father, I am not black, I am not male, I am. So you can see where it really is an unlearning or a subtraction process, which, that's not the way I perceived it. I perceived that I had to go to X amount of seminars, read X amount of books, and then someday, if I was lucky, in the future, you know, I would finally arrive at it. And here comes the course of saying, well, it's a subtraction thing. <laughs> You're it right now. You yeah. is right it now. Is. <laughs> but it's these yeah. other things that are laid on. And that's why when we come together, it's really valuable to start to look at these constructs in our minds that we kind of believe that we are, that they're just beliefs. All this overlay. Yeah. On the overhead projector. And it keeps diminishing the light, we think. Yeah. 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 So that's what we're confusing. Yeah. Can you talk about the role of how you see meditation kind of? You know, filtering out, reconciling, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. It might help some of these women who have problems trying to figure out how to get their thoughts straight before the reality gets straight. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, there's lots and lots of I kind of call them like mind training uh, exercises in the course. In other words, if you if you do take the course and you do just go along and, and try to understand the text some extent so you have a, a, the, the workbook has meaning and as you go along you'll have literally guided meditations in here and also just uh, basically in, instruments and exercises that are basically designed to sink down beneath the thoughts and I feel like that's it's a really important point of the course in other words that that this is a course in transforming your mind and it's not a course in just memorizing the, the book or you know going around and be able to talk about the course but but literally the practice of meditation or sinking down beneath them is very very important but it's like the rest of the book for me helps helps me start to uh, just be aware of these backward thoughts and about some of the concepts and ideas that I have but really it comes down to mind watching I call it where it's like a, it's a constant job 